You do not want a bulge or a protrusion in your groin or in your abdominal wall. And just to be clear, we're talking about hernias here. There are over 1 million hernia repair surgeries performed each year in the United States. And if you're male, you have a 27% lifetime risk of developing a groin hernia, almost a one in three chance. With females, that drops to about 3% as they are more prone to different types of hernias. And we actually have a body in this lab that has a hernia. So today, we're gonna show you this body as well as talk about the different types of hernias. We'll discuss why males are more prone to them, how they're treated, and if there's anything that you can do to prevent them from forming. It's going to be a protruding one. So let's jump into this anatomical awesomeness. So first, what is the definition of a hernia? A hernia is an organ or part of an organ that protrudes through the abdominal wall. And if I reflect this thoracic and abdominal wall out of the way, the hernia could be some of this fatty tissue and or pieces of the small intestine. Now there are two types of hernias that we're gonna focus on. One is a ventral hernia, the second is a groin hernia. And as I already mentioned, groin hernias affect males more, whereas ventral hernias tend to affect females more. And again, we'll talk about why these differences exist in a second. So let's start with the ventral hernias. If you take a look at this other cadaver, you can see that we've removed the skin, which includes the epidermis and the dermis, and we've also removed the third layer under the skin called the hypodermis, which is made of fatty or adipose tissue. And right here, you can see that we've exposed the left part of the rectus abdominis muscle, which most of us refer to this as the six pack muscle. And so I should take a quick second to give inspiration to all by saying everyone has a six pack. So be proud of yourself. It's just that you may or may not be able to see it depending on how much adipose or fatty tissue is covering it up. But anyway, on this six pack muscle or this rectus abdominis, if you look closely, you can see these tendinous intersections or tendinous inscriptions which separates the muscle into its individual blocks. You can also see on the right side of this cadaver, we didn't remove this white, somewhat transparent looking tissue called the rectus sheath, which is just this connective tissue sheath that covers up the rectus abdominis. Now, another structure that is really important for our hernia discussion, specifically the ventral hernia, is this structure here called the linea alba which simply translates to white line. And this is a vertical line dividing the rectus abdominis into right and left sides. Now, the linea alba can actually be stretched or pulled apart through a couple of different conditions. It can be congenital, but two of the common things that can actually pull this apart or stretch it is pregnancy. So a baby growing inside can literally start to pull apart this line or central obesity, which is a common cause in men. And this pulling apart of the linea alba is actually referred to as rectus abdominis diastasis or diastasis recti. Now, if the linea alba stretches or gets pulled apart, which you can actually see on this particular cadaver, it's a bit wider than normal. And this is likely due to a high amount of visceral fat underneath the muscle. But again, if the linea alba gets pulled apart, it creates a weakness in the front or the ventral aspect of the abdominal wall, making it more likely for someone to develop a ventral hernia. Now, this particular cadaver does not have a ventral hernia. It does have a groin hernia that I'll show you in a little bit, but there are a couple of different types of ventral hernias. You can get one at or near the belly button, referred to as an umbilical or paraumbilical hernia, or you can get it anywhere along that weak spot or that weakened linea alba. And if it's not by the belly button, they generally refer to it as an epigastric hernia. So just a review, a ventral hernia is a hernia on the anterior or ventral aspect of the abdominal wall. And the subtypes of ventral hernias are umbilical, paraumbilical, and epigastric. But before we get into the groin hernias, I need to introduce you to a new, and by far and away, the best sponsor we've ever had, us. Because right now at the Institute of Human Anatomy, we're running our biggest sale of the year, 40% off all digital study products, which means all the anatomy and physiology bundles. And yes, that includes the glorious Mega Bundle. And you are more than welcome to make fun of us for calling it the Mega Bundle. But we're also doing 30% off all IOHA merch, because if you're going to learn anatomy, you might as well look good while doing it. Now, the Mega Bundle isn't just an insanely deep collection of high yield a &P study resources. It now comes with bonus access to what our team endearingly refers to as AI Jonathan, an AI version of me. So you can literally call or chat with my AI clone and ask all your weird, wonderful, and 
slightly uncomfortable anatomy questions because trust me, people have asked some very interesting things. And of course, AI Jonathan still answers. So whether you're a med student, nursing student, massage therapist, or just the kind of person who likes to geek out about the human body, it's a great time to save on these study resources. The sale kicks off today, November 23rd, and runs through December 2nd. So check out the link in the description, pick up that mega bundle, and unleash your inner anatomy nerd. And now, let's give back to hernias. Now the groin hernias are a little bit of a fun discussion because we actually have to discuss why they're more common in males. And part of that has to do with the actual descent of the testes. And this is an awesome developmental story. The testes in the ovaries are actually what we call homologous structures, meaning they came from the same embryonic tissue. When you're developing inside mom, both of them actually start up by the kidneys. But while you're developing, both descend down to just medial to these bony landmarks called the anterior superior iliac spines, most often abbreviated as ASIS for obvious reasons. Now the ovaries are like, we're good, we'll stay right in here. But the testes get a little bit more adventurous, if you will, and they actually push into the abdominal wall and herniate to the outside of the body. Now many of you have likely seen people with defined abs, and you may have noticed the V-shaped lines. Those lines are created by a ligament called the inguinal ligament, and you can actually see where this ligament is located on this cadaver dissection, just right where this crease is. Now, there's also a canal called the inguinal canal that runs just slightly above the inguinal ligament. And this canal is where the developing testes will travel through. And as they travel through this canal, they'll pull veins, arteries, nerves, the vas deferens, which gets cut during vasectomies, and they even pull muscle with them. And this forms a muscular cord called the spermatic cord that you can see right here. And it contains all those veins, arteries, and nerves. And I think we've even dissected the vas deferens out of the way. Yes, we have. But you can see that tube or the vas deferens right there. And of course, this is the testis or the testicle. But to complete the story, the testes push into the skin, creating a pouch called the scrotum. So due to this natural herniation of the testes, the inguinal canal is larger in males. And this is the reason why they're so much more likely to develop a groin hernia called an inguinal hernia, which is when some of the abdominal contents, whether it be fat, pieces of the intestine, push through the inguinal canal. And you can actually see an inguinal hernia on the left side of this cadaver. This bulge that I'm touching with the probe and kind of pinching with my finger right here, this is really cool. I mean, look at this thing. And this was just a random discovery that we found on this body during the dissection process. Now, there's actually another groin hernia called a femoral hernia, where abdominal contents push through the femoral canal, which is near the femoral artery and vein that you can see right here. And so the abdominal contents would push down from the abdomen in this direction. And these, are, these femoral hernias are actually more common in females. But even though they're more common in females, they only account for three to 5% of all hernias whereas inguinal hernias make up 75% of all hernias. So again, groin hernias, specifically the inguinal variety, are much more common in males. So what do we do about hernias, and is there anything you can do to prevent them or reduce your risk of getting one? Well, sometimes you don't do anything about them. Some hernias are asymptomatic, meaning they don't cause any pain. Sometimes people will notice a small bulge around their belly button or even in their groin, and then they'll notice it's reducible, meaning that it'll just slide back into the abdominal cavity. Or I've even watched some people manually push their hernia right back in. In these cases, fixing these can just be a decision between the person and the physician if that person wants to actually do a surgical procedure to reinforce the wall with mesh. But some hernias can cause pain. Now, there's a range to this pain, mild discomfort all the way up to extreme pain. And when the pain becomes more moderate to severe, there's a concern that the biggest complication for a hernia is starting to develop. And that is if the hernia becomes incarcerated, meaning it gets stuck in the actual hole that it's pushing through and cannot be pushed back inside. Again, this is referred to as an incarcerated hernia. And once a hernia gets incarcerated, it can eventually lead to strangulation, which is when that protruding tissue or bowel is getting pinched or strangulated. This will pinch off the blood vessels and not allow blood to move in and out of that tissue, leading to extreme pain. And now we're talking about a medical emergency because that tissue could potentially die and become necrotic, leading to even more serious complications. 
I think that was a little redundant to say die and become necrotic, but regardless, you get the idea. So in this case of having strangulation, surgery is going to be performed right away to reduce the hernia and patch the weak spot, typically with some sort of mesh. But is there anything that you can do to lower your risk of getting a hernia in the first place? Well, some factors like genetics are unavoidable and still some people just have bad luck. Lifestyle changes can reduce abdominal pressure and strengthen your core. And so here's a quick breakdown. Maintaining a healthy weight to ease intra-abdominal pressure can help because the less visceral fat, the less intra-abdominal pressure. So decreasing visceral fat through diet and exercise helps reduce the risk of ventral and groin hernias. Plus, there are many other benefits to decreasing visceral fat. Eating enough fiber and drinking plenty of water also reduces risk. Why, you might ask? Well, if you eat high fiber food, you are less likely to push really hard while you're having a bowel movement, and straining during constipation stresses the abdominal wall. And let's do our best to strengthen that abdominal wall with core exercises to bolster muscles like the obliques and rectus abdominis, as this can help minimize weak spots from developing in the abdominal wall. So I hope this gave you some useful information about hernias. As always, thank you for watching and supporting our channel, and we'll see you in the next video.